The late Walter Mondale finally received his last respects yesterday from his fellow Democrats, and some of them missed the point of his life, but maybe not all. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Today, I'm going to remember Walter Mondale as I can do because I'm old enough. I'm going to talk about what he stood for and maybe give a little insight as to why he never became president and yet still gave a decent account of himself as a senator. First, I want to shout out to the sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down to the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, including this t-shirt. Look at this. The Trumpinator saying, I'll be back. And I want to remind you, I am a published author. Look for two new books. Here's one of them. Matthew's Run and its sequel, Matthew's War. They tell the story of what our country and our world might look like after 380-odd years of wokeness and about a cyborg with a conscience who also just doesn't like to be used, leading a rebellion against it. They're available right now at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, to name two. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please maintain a respectful silence. I'm likely to surprise many of you because if you stick with me to the end, I can show you why I can respect a man like Walter Mondale, maybe not as a statesman, but as a gentleman. Walter Mondale actually died in April of last year, but the virus that shall remain nameless prevented anyone from holding any kind of public ceremony. His fellow Democrats finally held that ceremony Sunday. Axios, Minneapolis Public Radio, and NBC News, among others, covered it. Fittingly, it fell on May Day, the International Communist Holiday. True, Walter Mondale never carried a Communist Party card, but he did derive his notions of statecraft from communist principles. I'll have more to say about that later. At that ceremony, politicians from Minnesota and elsewhere lavished the usual over-the-top praise on him. Joe Biden called him, and I quote, a giant in American political history, unquote. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota praised him for offering to run for the Senate even after Paul Wellstone died. She called that an example of bounce back. I call it a measure of humility. Here's a guy who has been Vice President of the United States and he doesn't hold himself above running for the Senate again. Senator Tina Smith, the other Senator from Minnesota, said he could make someone feel that they matter to him, not just professionally, but personally too. And not in a racy way either. In short, these Democrats praised Walter Mondale as a team player who thought of the team. But a giant in American political history, that he was not. A giant does not lose in such a landslide as the election of 1984. More important than his losing was why he lost. By all accounts, he ran a lackluster campaign. And one thing I remember about that campaign it became painfully obvious. He was not comfortable making speeches to large numbers of people. In full disclosure, I was taking part in Toastmasters International at the time. And any of you Texas talkers out there, I haven't forgotten any of you. We didn't talk politics often. But when it came to Walter Mondale, it was all about how dull he sounded. And when you run against one known for his communication skills, if you sound dull, you lose. I actually met Walter Mondale once during his campaign to be vice president. He came to Yale University and delivered an address to students in front of Connecticut Hall. The statue of Nathan Hale, which at the time stood near the building's long wall, provided a backdrop and landmark. He spoke then of shame for his country, a theme his successors constantly sound today. Some of his criticisms of Ford administration policy were correct, like Ford's support for Pakistan in the Pakistan-Bangladesh war. But mostly, he delivered a screed about how America does not take care of its citizens, with the kind of cradle-to-grave services that the Soviet Union promised, but never quite delivered. Tellingly, on the very day that I was standing in line after line registering for post office boxes, bank accounts, and such, a Soviet Army Air Force's pilot was skidding to a stop 800 feet past the end of the runway at Hakodate Airport in Japan in his MiG-25. But nobody ever talked about that. 
Mondale certainly didn't mention it, nor any other Democrat. It might have been embarrassing for their narrative at the time, but I digress. Senator Mondale made part of a long line of leftist politicians who Minnesotans have sent to the Senate over the years. I'll tell you about another one. Paul Wellstone. He held forth repeatedly for cradle-to-grave welfare and almost all the things Democrats push today. He cracked up in his Beechcraft King Air in 2002, and at his memorial service, mourners turned it into an unabashed political rally. I have a link to the description of 40 seconds of footage of the worst offending performances from that event. Senator Tom Harkin of Iowa was, by all odds, the worst offender. Who could forget this from his stem wire of, of a eulogy? I quote, For Paul Wellstone, will you stand up and keep fighting for social and economic justice? Say yes! Unquote Senator Harkin. Actually, we have no reason to doubt that Paul Wellstone would have wanted his memorial service to go that way. But here's the point. Paul Wellstone gets a big political rally for socialist policies. In contrast, all that Walter Mondale gets are some tired-sounding speeches. Is this really how people remember a giant in American political history? But though Walter Mondale fell short in comparison to Paul Wellstone, he probably would be a better senator today than Amy Klobuchar has been. Walter Mondale never blubbed because a favorite candidate does not sit on the Supreme Court. Nor did he ever prate about ideological balance on the Supreme Court. Amy Klobuchar did both these things during Trump's term. Maybe Walter Mondale was smart. Maybe he simply knew enough never to say the quiet part out loud. He definitely belonged to a Senate that conducted itself more like a private club than a legislative body. Walter Mondale was never one for the kind of invective one hears in the Senate today, and also heard in the Senate of Rome. At least he knew the concept of a time and a place for everything. And at that Yale rally, he was willing to stand close enough to a bunch of students that they could touch him. He even pressed the flesh with them afterward, and not in any receiving line either. Not many politicians will do that today. If he really did have Republican friends in the Senate, that could be why. Now, if he hadn't lost his head and said, and I quote, If elected, I will raise taxes at his nominating convention in 1984, would he have still lost? We don't know. We do know that he still had enough of the common touch. A giant he was not, but he did belong to a time few of us remember, which is now gone. Links to the description of the article, to the 40 seconds of clips from the Wellstone Memorial Service, and to Tom Harkin's speech, and to Conservative News and Views. I have another link to the awesome online store, as I mentioned. And if you like what you've heard, you can like this video and subscribe to this channel. This is Terry A. Herbert delivering another Declaration of Truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.